In this video, we'll tie everything together to talk about how we actually find the absolute max and minimum values of functions on closed intervals. What facts do we have so far about how this has to work? Well, first of all, we know that the absolute maximum value must occur at a local maximum value. Secondly, we know that interior local maximum values must occur at critical points because either it exists and it's zero, or it doesn't exist. Once we take care of the interior points, the only points that are left are the two endpoints of the interval. And these three facts here give us a pretty good idea of a process we can put together for how to actually solve these problems. So what does this process look like? So our first step here is to find all the critical points of f. What that does is give us a list of possible points that could be the max or min if that max or min occurs inside the interval. Now I want to evaluate my function f at all the critical points and at the two endpoints a and b. I like to write this into a table that we'll see with the example in a second, just to list all these values and set where they all are and what the values of f are each of these points. Then you just want to look at your list and pick the biggest and smallest one, the biggest gives the absolute max, and the smallest gives the absolute min. And that outlines the process of how you find the absolute max and absolute min of continuous functions on closed intervals. As an example, I want to find the max and minimum values of f of x is 2x cubed plus 9x squared minus 24x plus 5 on minus 2 to 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first look for the critical points. What does that mean? That means the derivative. My derivative here is going to be 6x squared plus 18x minus 24. That's a polynomial, so it always exists. So I only care about where it's zero. So I want to set this to zero and solve. This is equivalent if I divide everything by six. So I'm gonna get this the same thing as x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals zero. And this factors as x plus 4, x minus 1. Which means my critical points are at x equals minus 4 and x equals 1. Now, because the interval I care about is only minus 2 to 2, I don't care about minus 4. Minus 4 is outside that interval, so I could ignore it. The points I have to worry about now are 1, this critical point, and then minus 2 and plus 2. Let's now plug in all those values into my function f. So I have x values of minus 2, 1, and 2. I can plug these into f. So at minus 2, I get a 2 times a minus 8, which is a minus 16 for the first term, plus a 9 times 4 plus a 48 plus five. This gives me a 73. If I plug in one, get two plus nine minus 24 plus five, which is a minus eight. If I plug in positive two, I get 16 plus 36 minus 48 plus five, which is a nine. So for my conclusion, I get that the absolute maximum value is 73 because that's the value obtained here, and the absolute min is minus eight. And that's the general process we're going about finding the absolute max and min values of functions, going through finding critical points, and then determining at which of those the max and min are attained. 